That's classic. We bring you great laughs and a unique behind-the-scenes look at classic television shows and movies. I'm John Cato. I'm an actor, voiceover artist, and also bring you an amazing insight as a moderator with over 20 years' experience in the television industry. Well, uh, today we have another awesome episode of That's Classic, and uh, I'm, I'm very excited because today we have none other than, than Marta Kristen, who played Judy Robinson on Lost in Space. I mean, it doesn't get much better uh, just to be able to, to have a chance to chat with her. So listen, thank you so much for being here, Marta. You're very kind, and I appreciate it. I love being with you. Thank you. Oh, well, believe me, it's it's my pleasure. Um, so yeah, let's let's start uh, chatting about this. I, I'm so curious about, um, you know, I was reading uh, your background and how you started out. How did you actually get into acting? Because I noticed that it said, um, I believe it was in 1959, it was like you you were in LA and now you were with a guardian. And I was like, okay, what happened that you suddenly were into acting? Tell us about that. Well, I had always been into acting. Uh, I, you know, I came from an orphanage when I was five, and um, my from from Norway. And my parents said I, I walked towards them from the plane from Scandinavian Airlines, uh, and I walked towards them, uh, walking like Charlie Chaplin in the tram. Wow! And yeah, and they were both educators, so they they said, "Uh huh, here's an actress in in the making," and. Um, uh, so I started theater in Michigan, and uh, at, my dad taught at Wayne State University. So I did uh, oh. the children's program there, and and I did uh, oh, just lots and lots and lots of community theater, very good theater. And hmm. um, so when we came out to California, my dad and mother were taking a sabbatical leave from uh, from their teaching, and for a year, my dad to write a book on philosophy, and. Um, I immediately started in the high school, Santa Monica High School. I, I, I did oh. the talent show. I did. Yeah, I told them I wanted to sing with the school band, uh, so I, I sang "Blue Moon" one evening at the dance. dance. Wow! And um, I just I didn't have any fear. I just said, "This is what I want to do." And I was sitting in a restaurant, and James Harris, the producer of Lolita, came up to me. When yeah, very progressive film, by the way, for its yeah, time. Yeah, very. And uh, the book was amazing. Anyway, I was 15, and I knew a man was watching me, and, uh, you know, the actor in me just sort of, you know, perked up. And um, I, uh, he came up to me, and he said, are you interested in acting? And I said, oh, I've never been interested in anything else, but. Wow. He said, well, I'm producing a movie um, called Lolita. And uh, uh, with, of course, the very famous uh, director, uh, Stanley Kubrick. Kubrick. And um, yeah. I said, oh, wonderful. I would love to do it. He said, well, I think your parents should read it. <laughs> well, <laughs> read the book. My parents read the book and they said, no, no, that, uh, no, we don't want that for our little, beautiful little girl. And, um, but James Harris got me an agent really and, that wow um, yeah and i and at one of the top agents in hollywood and i immediately began to work and uh, you know as the ingenue and yeah. and uh and that's how it started uh, getting into film that is really something so during that time what did you audition for or actually what were you on during that that period you know kind of i guess we'll call it pre lost in space what what uh, what shows were you on you know things like Leave It to Beaver and Alfred Hitchcock Presents. <clears throat> I did two with uh, one one with, uh, directed by Hitchcock with Billy Mooney. Oh my! I mean, come on, that is really bizarre that yeah. that, that that happened. Did yeah. you did you know that uh, at the time? Like, because Bill Bill had obviously done quite a bit of work from as a very young child. Did yeah. you know at the time? Were you like, oh my gosh, that's Bill Mooney? No, no, didn't have a clue. I'm, I was so busy with theater. I mean, I, I was in um, community theater here in Los Angeles as well. That's one of the things I immediately got into. Yeah. And, um, now I, it, you know, I, I, and I was doing all these shows. 
on television. So did so so with Bill then did you uh did you guys form any kind of a relationship at that at that time or was it just like oh I just worked with another actor and that was it? Uh, no, I just enjoyed him. I thought he was cute. He was so little and he, you know he had that red hair and there's all those freckles and and I <laughs> and he was so natural and 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 um I saw Hitchcock calling him over because Hitch, Hitchcock, Mr. Hitchcock just sat in his chair and had people come to him as, uh, as, as he should have done since he was uh, so amazingly uh, famous and, and uh, wow. just, a, just a you know, great director. But Billy's eyes widened and I'm sure Billy tells the story much better than I, but I called Billy over and I said, what did he say? He said, if I didn't stop moving, I, he'd nail my feet to the ground. <laughs> I love it. Did by the way, was Hitchcock? What was he like? Like, granted, great director. What was he like behind the camera? Like, what was what type of person was he like? He didn't direct me at all. Um, he just said, "Go do yeah." We're doing this scene, and he had nothing really, very little to do with uh, with uh, the directing part of me as an actor. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, he. He storyboarded everything, mm -hmm. is my understanding, and um, so everything was pre-planned, and <clears throat> it just simply became what he had storyboarded, and uh, and then it just went on from one thing to the next. Was and I didn't have really any any uh, connection with him except my staring at him, watching him, awed by this uh, this great great man. Was it a bit intimidating as an actor, like doing your scene and you have this 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 director oh. that, you know? No, I kind wasn't of an intimidated. Icon? Not at all. No, I know. Um, my mother always said, "Never ever feel like you are less than anyone else." Hmm. And so, oh, there goes my dog again. She, I'm sorry. Okay. It's a heart condition. Um, anyway, uh, never never be intimidated, and um, uh, and always think of of everyone as as an equal and um and and respect admire uh, appreciate um uh, honor people be kind and uh other than that just um you and do your work wow that they talk about best advice from a parent that's terrific what, and, and they lived that as well, my parents. That's wonderful. That is wonderful. Did, by the way, uh, Leave it to Beaver, obviously, you know, it's hard to not think of Jerry Mathers, think of Tony Dow, mm -hmm. um, you know, the cast. What was that experience like? And did you get to know them on any level? Uh, I, I didn't get to know them. You know, you sort of go into, you do a show and then you go and do something else. And, and, yeah. and you know, you sort of pass, you're passing through. And, but I do know Tony and his beautiful wife. And now, and um, uh, he's, he's just a lovely man, a great artist. He goes out, he lives in a place called Topanga, which is a very sort of rustic place. Mm -hmm. And he goes out and finds wonderful driftwood or wood. And there's a lot of like manzanita there. And he creates these beautiful sculptures that are shown in a gallery in Beverly Hills. That's amazing. That's yeah, amazing. It's, amazing. it's amazing. Yeah, and, and I also did. Um, I also did my three sons, and I did a couple of those with Don Grady being Don Grady's girlfriend. Yeah, and, quite a few of them, by the way. I thought I saw like three, maybe three, three yeah. episodes. Yeah. yeah, and I did. Um, I did the greatest show on earth, which is what I sh what Irwin Allen saw when he he said, "I want that that girl who was on the high wire, and I want Marta Kristen and." Um, that's who, and that, that's Wait. how I connected with him, yeah. Did, did, so did you, um, did you have to audition for Lost in Space then, or was it just, he said, no, that's I, it? No, I just met Irwin. I remember exactly what I was wearing. Uh, it was a pink boucle, sort of a beautiful pink boucle suit and big round um, uh, gold earrings, hoops, and, uh, he just, he just loved, he loved me. And, and of course he, he had seen all of my work or, or most of my work through, you know, you know, through other, you know, through film and, and, um, and so he said, I want that Marta Kristen. And, and um, I wasn't sure whether I wanted to do it actually. Now, why? 
Oh, because it, it had such a large cast. My my ambition had been to go to New York and do theater because that's where I started. That's what I loved. Uh, and um, I, you know, I thought, well, if I do that, I'm sort of putting that that dream, you know, in another place. Uh -huh. And um, but but he called me quite a few times. Said Marta, and he was very persistent. Yeah, Marta, I want you. I want you wow. in this show. And um, he said, I don't want anybody else. I want you. And apparently he was testing. He was doing, you know, screen tests with other young women. And he told me that. He said, you know, there are other people there. <laughs> and uh, I talked to my family and they all felt that it was a good show, a good, clean show. I mean, it was about... Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, a space family, space family Robinson, essentially. And um, and so we all sort of agreed that that would be that would be the right thing to do. And, and so I did. Wow, that's amazing. So did, when was the very first time that you actually read with uh, Mark Goddard? Because I know I know the two of you have a special relationship. What was that very first meeting like? Uh, well, it was on set. We had wow. met prior. We didn't do any rehearsals. What? It, no, no rehearsals. You just get on the set. You're cast as a certain person, uh, you know, the, as the character, and you just go and do it. TV is very, very fast, and wow. they hire. That's why hiring the right people uh, is important. Is very important. I'm just surprised there wasn't just because of the initial, you know a pilot of the show they didn't have some kind of they, they put you right in there that's interesting well, you would think but i didn't and, yeah and mark was sort of this um suave you know young hip guy you know who was uh, older than i but uh but very very handsome and 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 uh, uh the women liked him and he liked women and, <laughs> uh, and he was but he was charming and funny Great, great sense of humor. Very, very, very smart. And uh, he still is. Yeah, <laughs> what was, I, and the two of you have had a special kind of friendship relationship uh, ever since, is that correct? Oh, yes, yes. We've always, uh, we, we see each other at uh, conventions and um, where uh, we, we argue a bit about politics and we, well, we discuss. Yeah, of we, course, we, everyone has their debate, sure. We debate. Sure. And uh, and I roll my eyes. He rolls his eyes. Uh, but uh, uh, we're we're good friends, and I and I love his wife. Evelyn is just oh, she's she's just so she's perfect for Mark. She calms him down. She um, she's very very smart, a kind, lovely woman. When when my husband died, she sent me all kinds of books on grief and how to handle oh. that. And, 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 um, and, and, and she, she, she just is very thoughtful and, and loving, loving and, and, um, and, and, and Mark is lucky to, to be with her, I, I must say. That's pretty cool. What, what about uh, Guy Williams, by the way? I know that, um, you know, I, I, did you, were you familiar with Guy before the show? Uh, oh, from yes. Zorro? And, yeah. Oh, Zorro. It was my love. I just, I fell madly in love with Zorro when I was watching it. Yeah, oh, he was so handsome and, and I couldn't believe he was going to be my father and that, that I would be playing uh, his daughter and, and, and working with him because uh, he, he also was a, a man of great, um, of great intellect. He um, he had he was a true gentleman, and he he loved classical music. You would hear that being played in his dressing room, and and he loved word games. And and uh, he and June taught me how to play killer um, Scrabble. I mean, wow. killer Scrabble. And up to and to this day, I'm really good at word games. So <laughs> and and, and uh, in fact, Kevin, my husband was a uh, an attorney, and and he had some, you know, quite uh, well-known attorneys from Washington who he became friends with because he worked worked with them and um, in the antitrust department. And there was one who came and, and he thought of himself as this great uh, word person, you know, Scrabble person. And, and so I said, well, let's play some Scrabble. And so we sat down and he was sort of looking here and looking there. And all of a sudden he sees the board and making seven, 
a seven letter word. And then I'm making another seven and then another. And I beat him, of course. But I, 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 I attribute that to Guy and June and how they how how they taught me how to play that, that game. Yeah. Did you now were you part of the uh, I know that Guy had gone back to I believe was it Argentina? Yes. Yeah. And then uh, he had come back for the Family Feud special yes. reunion episode, which I believe you were also part of, right? I was, yes. Yeah. So was that the, well, first of all, was that, how did you enjoy that experience? And also, was that one of the last times that you saw him? It was the last time I saw him. And um, he had um, he had, had a stroke in Argentina. Oh, I and, didn't know that. Yeah. And so uh, it was six months later, and we were all worried about whether he would be able to, um, you know, uh, you know, the lang language was more difficult for him. But he really just hit the mark. He just, he was there, he was sharp. He was really just uh, 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 quite uh, astounding. And I, I was so surprised to, to see that he did so well. And, and, um, and, and then we, um, then he left and went back to Argentina and, and, and he died sometime later um, uh, of a stroke, another mm -hmm. stroke. And um, we were all so, so terribly saddened by it. 1989. That's right. That's right. Had you been close? I mean, had you been in communication with him before Family Feud? Well, we, you know, we would see each other socially at uh, different conventions, different engagements, you know, dinners, mm -hmm. dinner parties with, uh, with, you know, that Irwin would have or, um, you know, someone else from the cast would have. And um, I, I, you know, I, I didn't know him socially very well, but I became uh, friends with his uh, his wonderful daughter Tony, mm -hmm. and uh, his son Steve. Uh, they're just delightful people, and and uh, Tony and her mother are are um, really very very special. And I'm I'm so happy to still have a connection with them. Right. I understand that Mark, uh, Mark and Guy both when they when they uh, the Lost in Space shifted into you know in se uh, season two season three that because it, the focus was more on Doctor Smith they had less screen time. I understand that Guy actually didn't mind as much. Uh, Bill, you know, I had Bill and Angela on the podcast and and Bill was saying that he didn't seem to mind it as much because he enjoyed his time as you said with like his classical music or being off. Offset. Did did you get that impression as well? No, that wasn't my impression. My impression was that both June and Guy were very unhappy that uh, what was supposed to have been a, a, a television series that starred them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I mean, they were big names. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that um, that uh, it, it became about the robot and Billy and uh, uh, and uh, Doctor Smith. So, uh, and I was very disappointed about that too, because uh, you know, I kept going to Irwin and saying, Irwin, you know, where are the storylines that you told me about, you know, that you promised me? Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I, I need more to do, you, you know, it's just, uh, it, what happened was that, um, I believe, was that CBS told Irwin, there's no romance on this show, it's a children's show, because Guy and June in the very beginning were, you know, lovingly looking at each other as, as a mother and father should do. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was very, very realistic and, and mm -hmm. appropriate, but apparently CBS did not think so. And so when Guy, uh, when, um, when, uh, when it came to Mark and my relationship, which was obviously supposed to build at some point sure. during the show, um, they said no. So I don't think they had much choice in, in, in and, and also Jonathan knew that if he, um, uh, as a villain, if he, be, he continued to be a villain on the show, that uh, they would cut him out sooner or later, that they would get rid of him somehow. And, um, and, and, uh, and, he, and, and he was able to write for himself. I mean, he rewrote a lot of the scripts. Did for he really? Himself. Yes, he did. And uh, you know, I learned a lot from Jonathan because uh, he took care of himself. And it, uh, it wasn't that he was selfish because he just knew, he just knew how, he, he knew how to um, um, take a part of that, 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 that he, he figured would become something that would be memorable mm -hmm. and he made it more, more so. 
and or that it could be memorable and he made it more so and uh that, and that's exactly what he did so he would he would he you know he did all of the alliterations of bubble-headed booby and and he wrote all that in and um and it, wow. he, he was he was the villain that you love to hate yeah did he was he i, I know that you, you said that he wrote that in. was he also at times just improving? you know like were there nope. moments he didn't improv. It, he wrote it all down, and wow. you know we would we would get most of our pages. You know maybe, well, hopefully five days prior to, you know while while we were continuing to to um, film, we would also get uh, our script for the next week, mm -hmm. and so we'd start working on that. But he would go home and he would write. He would write it, rewrite it, and 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 he always ended up. I found this so funny. <laughs> he always ended up writing. The last line for himself in in the scene <laughs> that he was in, because then the camera would end up on him, of course. <laughs> I mean, smart actor, smart actor. And wow. and you know, he had come from very poor beginnings, and um, and 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 his and and he actually went to pharmaceutical school, wow, and became a pharmacist, and he hated it. And uh, he ended up, he started doing, I think, uh, you know, some plays here and there off Broadway. And he came home to his parents that said, I'm not doing this anymore. And then he developed this voice and, and, uh, and uh, you know, because he was just a New York, you know, uh, uh, I think the Bronx kid, you know? Oh my gosh, I yeah. never knew that. Yeah. And he met his sweetheart, uh, Gertrude. Uh, they they were high school sweethearts, and uh, I, I, he uh, he talked he would talk about how he was so poor that he would sleep on the dining room table because his parents had to use his bed to rent out you know oh yeah. my gosh yeah and um, uh, I I loved Jonathan and and uh, when Jonathan passed I got I became friends with Gertrude and wow. uh, and Gertrude was uh, so interesting she was so. She talked like this, and you know, and I thought, well, that you know, that's sort of what Jonathan was doing <laughs> on the show, and um, I, I know she was delightful. She was the first um, female executive at Max Factor. Oh my gosh! And, yeah, and developed products and and all kinds of things. So Jonathan, and Jonathan always kept his his um, professional life apart from his private life. So we really didn't know Gertrude until Jonathan passed and, or until after the show. And then we would have dinner. We would have occasional dinners together and Gertrude would, would be uh, join, would, you know, would join us. Wow. Even during the show with the cast, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I, that's very interesting. Did, so did he, uh, when he was off camera then, and he was just talking with you, did he have that like Bron Bronx accent or was he no. still talking? Oh, no. <laughs> no, no. Okay. You know, he he uh, trained himself, completely trained himself to be rid of that, and and um, and uh, because he he wanted to be a classical actor, and wow. uh, you know, he did Mad Woman of Chaillot on, on Broadway with Michael Rennie. I mean, he was really he he really did remake himself, and uh, wow. and he and he he never hid that. He always mm -hmm. said people would say. <laughs> ask him if he was English, he'd say, oh, no, just affected. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Did, yeah. um, what about Irwin Allen, by the way? Um, you know, granted, yes, I know that he came and he, he, you know, he's like, Marta, I want Marta. But what was your, you know, what was your overall take on what was Irwin Allen like? Um, you know, I guess off camera or, you know, as a person, what was he like? My encounters with him were always, um, with the, they, they were, they were, it's hard, to, it was quite, it was so long ago, but they, mm -hmm. they were always very, um, um, very uh, easygoing, very, uh, he would, we would have lunch occasionally and, and uh, we would just talk and talk about the business and about the show and, and um, he was always very, very kind, very, very friendly, but, but he was a bit of a tyrant on the show. Yeah. You know? I'm sure Bill and Angela mentioned that. Yeah. Yeah. I know he wasn't <laughs> very open to change. I know Bill had come up with that new uh, pilot. Or, you know, pilot for a new show, I should say, of, of a new series of Lost in Space. And it sounded like he pretty much got 
shut down on that. Uh, the kibosh was was uh, thrown at him, but at the same time, um, you know, it was uh, written by a young man, mm -hmm. and uh, and and it it was um, it was good, but it, but it was again written by a, a young man with dreams of other things that sexual dreams of some things, and 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 it wasn't it wasn't what Irwin would have wanted to do. And, uh, you know, and, and, and we eventually did something, you know, that was, that sort of followed the line of, um, of what Bill had written on the Blu-ray that we mm -hmm. did. And, um, and, but, you know, I, there were some things I didn't like, so I worked with him and, and, uh, and we changed some things and, and uh, uh, Billy didn't like particularly like my doing that, but you know, <laughs> like, hey, I'm too old. I'm too old to be doing something that I don't want to do. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, the uh, you know, one of the thoughts that that I have, I was reading about like Lost in Space, and were there moments where you just like could not keep a straight face? I mean, oh, yeah. you know what I mean. It's just one of those shows where sometimes as I watch it, I'm like, boy, that had to be hard to hold it together. <laughs> Yes, indeed. In fact, in the Great Vegetable Rebellion, I, I look at it now and I, I'm just walking around smiling, just, you know, gently smiling through it, saying, thinking to myself, is this really, is this really what I'm doing? I'm talking to a vegetable, a <laughs> carrot. <laughs> and Mark, I, I don't know whether uh, Bill and Angela told you this, but Mark, Mark said to the, came up to the director and he said, Hey, hey, uh, what's my motivation? I mean, I'm talking to a carrot. What's my motivation? <laughs> he, said, he said, eight years with Strasbourg. I need, you know, and I'm talking to a carrot. <laughs> so. Oh, that's funny. Were you ever on set where you literally kind of had to like, you know, I know that that happens to every actor. It's been a long day, whatever, where you just can't keep, uh, you know, you're trying to say a line, but you just can't, you know, pull oh. it off. Oh, yes. When I had to say something about little tiny robots or something, I, I, I couldn't say it. I would say, ro, 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 ro. <laughs> and then I'd start laughing. But also, it was like a Friday night, and and Fridays they kept us very late because usually on, on weeknights we'd have to we'd have to have ten hours mm -hmm. uh, before we got on became, had to go back on set. So, um, but on Friday nights they didn't worry about that even though they had to pay us a little bit more. And yeah. we, and, and so they, you know, it would be eight, nine o'clock and, and we would just be bonk, bonkers. Our, our heads would be oh. like, where, you know, where are we, who are we? <laughs> and, and we'd start giggling and laughing. And, um, uh, and of course they would, you know, save all of the scenes for, with the adults at the, you know, at the later, later time because the kids would have to go home. And uh, yeah. It was hard to keep a keep a straight face, and then Irwin would come down on the set, and he'd say, "Time is money. Time is money." Oh. And, you know, and oh yeah, and we'd all go, "Oh, Irwin," <laughs> and everybody would start sweating a little bit. Oh jeez. Yeah. So, um, you know, a lot of times uh, I I watch a show and I think of June. Was June kind of like a mother for the cast? I mean, off off the set, or what was what was she like? No, no, June was a rock and roll. Um, rock and roll girl. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. She uh, she would wear uh, if she was going out after 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 filming, she she'd all of a sudden uh, come out of her dressing room with this like crocheted bell bottoms and top and wow. yeah, she'd be going to some concert. No, no, she loved she loved um, uh, rock and roll and, and, uh, and, uh, no, and she was very, very hip, but very hip. And, and I have to tell you one of the smartest women I've ever known. Wow. I wow. Mean, she, she just, she, I don't know whether she had a photographic memory, but she could, she could memorize a script like no, in no time. She, she, she knew, she read all the newspapers. She, she, um, she, she was so informed about she was so well informed about almost everything about wow. and about the space program. Really? She really, yeah, she became 
really um, interested in uh, in you know uh, uh, in in aeronautics and and um, NASA. You know, and uh, NASA and and uh, wrote to all of the um, uh, astronauts, and they wow. had so they would communicate with each other. It was yeah, she was quite something, really quite. She still is. She she still is at ninety six. That's amazing. I mean, seriously, at ninety six. Yeah. I mean, wow, that's impressive. What about um, you know, the danger? Will Robinson is like one of the most iconic phrases in our you know, in our, in our country, basically. I mean, everybody knows that. Even if you haven't seen Lost in Space, people are like, oh, I know that. No. Do you even recall when it was set on the show? It must have been right in the very beginning. Oh, really? Because when the robot came in, yeah, it must have been. Because that would be, that would have been, I know, I don't, I don't really know. Now, I know yeah, sure. Bill would probably know because he has this in the, Amazing memory as well. He's he's just quite quite stunning in his in his recall. Yeah, well, Bill was saying, "Gosh, I think it, it might have only been said once." You know, it was it was really interesting on that that you know the actual danger Will Robinson. Yeah, yeah, now, but yeah. I I know that my fans would know this answer. Right, I'm sure, and I'll hear it. By the way, I will hear it. Someone will send in a comment. I know that's coming, but just want to know. Um, so the other thing I was going to ask you is Bob May um and being in the robot and everything like that bill and angela had their own take on it and by the way it was it was all good and great but i'm just curious what was your perception of bob may and his uh feelings for being the robot i thought it was very sweet there was something about it that um he he was he was sad that they didn't use his voice because he had to be um, um, familiar with all the text, of course, and there was a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, he, I think he felt that he didn't get the kind of recognition that he should have. Although after the show, you know, he did all kinds of conventions and, and uh, pretty much made a living uh, doing uh, conventions uh, wow. as, as the robot and, and, and traveling all over the place. Uh, <laughs> but, um, I, you know, he was he was a, a man who who had a lot of stories to to tell, and um, uh, I never knew which was true and which wasn't. But um, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> he, you know, I mean, he talked a lot about traveling and uh, to Florida with a show, whole show the train full of people that and with champagne and uh, yeah, you know, I, I don't know, I don't, yeah. and, you know, that he had. He had guys who worked for him and you know I didn't I don't know any I don't I assumed some of it was true and others I just sort of went oh well yeah you know he's, yeah yeah he's a you know he's a bit of a of a storyteller so but he was lovely he was he was kind and that's that's you know he he had he smoked too much <laughs> oh, he was a smoker. Okay, I got you. Smoking. The smoke was coming out of the robots. All the oh, time. come on! While he was inside the robot. <laughs> the robot. Oh, yeah. Jeez. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got you. Well, the other thing uh, too is the for that time, especially that was the most expensive set ever built. Yes. I had read that it was three hundred and fifty thousand dollars to build that set. Did you have a sense of that when you were on it? Was it like whoa? Well, I was driving my first day there uh, to go there, mm -hmm. driving my little Volkswagen square back and thinking, here I am, Marty Christen, Birgit Rusan, and driving to 20th Century Fox wow. to do this show. How strange, huh? And, um, and then I got to, to the studio and they actually asked me, what do you want for breakfast? <laughs> oh. oh. And, uh, and then I walked on the set after makeup and I was stunned. I just, I almost wanted to cry because wow. it was so beautiful. It was, I mean, the panels and the people walking around and the extras and I mean, it was, it was show business. It was wow. film. It was, I mean, even though I had done these other shows, this was an extravaganza. 
and I hadn't expected that. So. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I understand that they used real for that time. Um, they were uh, called Burroughs computers. They were these expensive old computers, but they actually used them. Yes. In the in the on the set, that's just unreal. Yes. You know? All the lights flashing. Yes. Yes, that's right. Yeah, and I don't think I, I mean that's the one area that it feels like Irwin Allen did not hold back. No, no. And well, he used a lot of different props from, you know, from the studio that he was oh. known to do that. And uh, he just pulled from here and pulled from there. And uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, and then he he then he bought or they, they developed built things. And, and but it was really quite stunning. Wow. Wow. And the, space, the spaceship itself was really remarkable in how it moved because you know they would have to they would have to have a certain camera angle so they would have to move part of the spaceship away and i mean it was just really beautifully done beautifully uh, engineered and um it uh i mean you know like our uh our so-called elevator you know <laughs> yeah we'd get in and then we would just you know sink down <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I love oh, that. <laughs> oh wow, it looks so cool. Oh yeah, it did. It did. Yeah. Wow. It was it was so it was a great um experiment really in television uh to have uh, the first sci-fi show with with a family. A family right. adventure series it was really quite quite uh, 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 stunning uh, for the time. Oh, definitely. Most definitely. Did so. How big was the actual Jupiter two then? When you were saying they were taking the shots, I mean, was it pretty large or? It was very large. It filled up a good part of the set. Wow. And, yeah, and um, well, you could see it when we would stand on the the uh, incline. You know. Mm -hmm. to, oh, the bridge or whatever yeah, the the, the bridge, yeah right. coming down. Yeah. Wow. wow. You could see how large it was. It was it was large. And, uh, and, and, you know, you, you could walk in it and it, it was like a spaceship, you know, with the tubes wow. and all the paneling and no, yeah, it was quite, yeah. I am so envious. I'm sorry. That sounds so cool, Marta. Thank you. Um, so tell me this, did you, uh, that first time, okay. So that was your first time you, you're coming on the set and all that. What was the first experience when you actually realized like, you know, either being in front of fans or, you know, understanding that this is a big big show that you know um it's it's bigger than just you know your day filming it you know out in the public D did you have an experience where you're like oh wow i guess people know me you know i i um i never people would look people would watch people would see me but they at that time they weren't like they are now where they mm -hmm. you know they 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 uh, come at you. They um, I just sort of felt like I did my work. I went home, uh, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And then when the show was on, I was so busy that uh, you know I was a, a body surfer. I you know was mm -hmm. running. I did all kind of dancing. Um, I, you know on my time off and and um, so uh, you know I never. Except one time when we were when I we were invited uh, the show the cast was invited to New York for the CBS convention. Oh yeah. And um, I thought, oh, this is great. I'm going to go walk around New York City by myself um, before I had to be at the convention. And and I turned around and all of a sudden I noticed it was like a small group of people. And I'd stop and they'd stop it. Oh, it's wow. like a cloud, you know, sort of a nice white cloud sort of following me and and a fluffy white cloud, you know, and, and not a dark shadow. And um and I, you know, I went to the Empire State Building, I went up to the top, I, you know, I did all of the, the touristy things. They're still there. At they were point. still there. I'd come down, they were still there. I went back to the hotel as I was approaching to go into the hotel. They said, oh, Miss Kristen, Miss Kristen. And I said, yes, would you sign our autographs? Oh <laughs> my sign gosh. Sign that, our photo. I mean, would, would you sign our, would you autograph our photos? And, and, um, and, and I said, I mean, it was a large <laughs> group of people and it was so, it was so sweet, but I had never, in, you know, encountered that here in California, I think in Los Angeles anyway, they're more mm -hmm. used to people in the business. So they just sort of 
you know, look at you and say, oh, she looks familiar, but, and I look so different. I mean, I didn't wear makeup. My hair was straight and I look more like a surfer girl. And so, um, yeah, so I, so it was, it, it was quite remarkable. And I, I, I was so surprised and so taken aback by that kind of attention. Right, right. And especially to follow you that far is like, wow, I know, I know. It's crazy. You know? I know, it was crazy. Yeah. It was fun. I mean, it was like, I, I kept wondering what in the world are they doing? <laughs> and what it was for me was uh, quite, you know, I mean, I, it, it, it was like, oh, that's a good thing, as my yeah. mother has done. Good, Marta. <laughs> yeah, right. Heck yeah. So what about, um, you know, I noticed in the, in doing my research that the boy who screwed Christmas, this, this, uh, this, bolt. Uh, Not bolt, the, bolt. the bolt, the boy, <laughs> the bolt <laughs> who screwed Christmas. Boy, I love it. Anyway, the bolt who screwed Christmas. I noticed that it was, uh, you worked with um, Jonathan Harris, Bill and Angela on that. Yes. How did that come together that all of you suddenly were back working together? Well, we, we actually worked separately because it was, uh, you know, all done. Um, uh, it was in uh, animation. So mm -hmm. um, it was, um, you know, we didn't really see each other, but it was, and we were just doing it as a favor, you know, oh. for the, this gentleman. And uh, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was fun. And once I found out that uh, Jonathan was going to do it, I said, oh, well, I'm there. And, wow. Yeah, and but Jonathan and I would see each other at conventions, and uh, and 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 I would see the rest of the cast. But Jonathan and I, I always felt had a special relationship. And uh, and once he he was quite ill at the very end, mm -hmm. and um, we walked around in uh, at a convention site in Florida, and and we just walked around, and I, you know, held onto his arm, and and we just talked and talked about the business and. And talked about uh, some of the things I'd done and some of the things that he had done. And and um, one of the things I loved most about him was what I learned, and I tell everybody this, is mm -hmm. that when you get on set, again, it's what my parents had said, that you treat everyone with respect and uh, you learn their names, you learn what they do, you watch them, you become... You're all part of the family. You can't do you you, you can't do one thing with one 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 person can't do you know something without the other, right. and you're all dependent on each other. It's an ensemble, and um, I've heard that George Clooney said um, that uh, won't allow any kind of of unpleasantness um, mm -hmm. on, on set. That and and that's the way it should be. And Jonathan taught me that. And he knew everybody and he joked with them always. And he told quite blue jokes too. <laughs> oh, he said, are there any children around? <laughs> oh my gosh. And, wow. uh, and, 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 you know, and they loved him. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, uh, and, 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 and he would bring uh, lollipops. I, I don't know whether uh, Angela and Bill told you this. No, he, no. Oh, he would bring every Friday Tootsie Roll Pops a whole bag of Tootsie Roll Pops and hand them out to everybody. Oh, so wherever wow. I wherever I go, there is a fan who will come up and hand me a Tootsie Roll Pop. Oh, yeah, it's that a, is and so I, special. And may I, may I say something about the fan people? Oh, please, Marta. They are oh, the V9 Club, for instance. They're the robot club. Mm -hmm. They uh, often come to the conventions that I'm at. And um, they take care of me. <laughs> They're like, I'm very independent, right? I can and, tell. And if I have to go out and, you know, walk 10 blocks to a restaurant, I'll do so. And they would, they'll say to me, don't you do that. Don't you walk. If you need anything, you call me and I'll call us, you know, you can't, we don't want you to be doing that. Well, you're Marta Krista and why you, something wow. you. And, and I feel so loved and so cared for and so, um, so respected and, but mostly cared about and I care about them. And I, and I think people get that. Um, I meet people who have become my good friends. Wow. Um, that really good friends and uh, people who are, uh, you know, understand um, and care 
uh, we care about each other. We care about our our shared lives, and um, and that's that's what fans are about. That's I mean, we are no one without them. Mm -hmm. But I love that you you get that, and I love that you feel that, and because there are so many other actors that just don't get that and they don't understand just how precious that is that that's that's wonderful that you you recognize that that's a gift that's a real gift um so i the other the other thing i was going to ask you about was your theatrical uh career as well which by the way i have to tell you one little side note i would look through and and i saw west coast ensemble and i used to be in west coast ensemble but i think i might have left either just right before you you or just right after i'm not sure but i saw it yeah, with what less was there right at the time yes. was, yeah yes. sure well less well it was john lynn who was our drama coach at the time uh-huh um at west coast ensemble i mean not west coast ensemble but he was our teacher right and um we a group of us decided to start a company and john lynn was the dramaturg and with Les Hansen and uh, Les was the real shaker and mover in it. Yep. But I, I, oh, I did everything there. I, 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 I mean, I built sets, I washed toilets, yep. I produced, I acted, I, you know, I did everything. Me and, too. <laughs> I, well, there you go. I was with them for five years, I think it was. And then, wow. um, you know, then I finally just, uh, I had to, I had other things that I had to get done, but mm -hmm. it was a great theater company. I don't know whether you know that it was voted by NPR, the best small theater company in Los Angeles. I did not know that. That's yeah. quite cool. That's yeah. really cool. That's an honor from NPR, my gosh. Yeah. So what, as far as from a theatrical uh, side, what plays have you done that you personally, you know, those were highlights for you? Well, Wings probably was the the highlight. It's an Arthur Coppett film. I mean, a, a, a play, mm -hmm. and um, it was a, it's about a woman who was a wing walker and has a stroke, oh, and wow. uh, and it's um, it's all it's almost ninety minutes of of this woman Emily Stilson recalling her life, and uh, and then after the stroke, um, uh, you know, going back to. Uh, um, Talking about her, her, her life as a, as a wing walker. Talking about her, her, um, her uh, uh, courage. Her, you know, um, her desire as a woman to be uh, liberated to from from the bonds of earth, mm -hmm. and that pretty much is how it ends. I mean, in, with her death, but it is such an amazing play because it, um, well, like it starts with, the director was great. He starts, I'm sitting on the stage knitting as the audience comes in. Oh, wow. And, and then, and, and uh, you know, just knitting away and, and they're all talking and talking and talking. And then the lights come up and the audience stops talking. And then I have a stroke. Oh my God. And yeah. And it's, hmm. it's, it's, and then it goes from, uh, I mean, it's just, and then the, uh, the doctors come in, the, uh, the uh, social worker comes in, the, the, I mean, all kinds of people come in uh, back and forth, back and forth behind me. And it's, it was a really, really beautifully directed and uh, 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 play by uh, Mitch, Mitch Levine, Mitch Levine, mm -hmm. and uh, won all kinds of awards. And, um, who was it who said that uh, one reviewer said that uh, it, uh, my performance was, again, patting myself on That's the back. That's okay. <laughs> was like, um, what are the, um, the, uh, the Notre Dame, um, uh, what do they call that hold up the note? Uh, gargoyles or? Uh, uh, well, no, it wasn't the gargoyles. No, but it was, yeah, it was like. But no, but it was, but but anyway, it, it's um, uh, like the stanchions that hold up the the Notre Dame Cathedral. I mean, uh, which was quite uh, quite something to hear. Yeah, yeah. But um, it was a really, really interesting and and exciting production to be in and, and everything that I had wanted to do in theater. And wow. of course I did a lot at West Coast Ensemble. Uh, one was um, 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 
Love Suicide at Schofield Barracks, where oh, uh, oh, oh yeah, wow. Yeah, and I played um, Lorna, Lorna Bates, and uh, who had been a prostitute and then married uh, married a, a military man, and, yeah. and no one knew my background. And um, uh, it, it, it's interesting, wonderful, and, and, and again, very, very good reviews. West Coast Ensemble did some uh, very experimental things too. We would have mm -hmm. um, people um, uh, admit uh, 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 plays, uh, you know, that they had written, and and we would have a contest. And then yeah, I think they continued yeah. on doing that. Yeah, yeah they did. Yeah. They continued that, and that was mm -hmm. uh, that was the first theater company I knew of that did that in 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 Los Angeles. That's Small pretty theater. cool. Gosh, that's some great stuff. Did. Um, I have I have one that uh, came into my head that's not a totally separate show, but uh, that when we were talking about earlier when you were in shows was the man from Uncle. I haven't had anybody on that's that was on that show, and I always loved it. I always loved Robert Vaughn and David McCallum. Did you have any uh, any time with them while you were on the show? Yeah, I spent quite a bit of time with Robert Vaughn in wow. between uh, in between scenes. Um, uh, you know when they would be lighting, and uh, we would, and he was very interested in philosophy, and that my father had been a professor of philosophy interested him, uh, and um, and we talked about Kierkegaard, and wow. yeah, and Goethe, and uh, yeah, it was uh, it was uh, he he was very charming, and of course I was young and beautiful, and and uh, you know yeah, so and he's he, a, yeah, yeah, and yeah. he's Robert Vaughn, yeah, yeah, he's Robert yeah. Vaughn, and and I had watched Man from Uncle. I loved it. I was so happy to be doing that show. Yeah, that's pretty cool. The other one that I saw that I was like, oh my gosh, I have to go back and watch it because I want to see you is uh, Beach Blanket Bingo because I <laughs> think of Annette Funicello and Frankie Avalon and um, yeah, actually, well, I'd love to hear about it, but I have another question associated with that. What what was that experience like for you? Uh, it was uh it was, I was cold a lot. <laughs> I was in the water a lot, but uh, it was sweet. You know, there was uh, something very nice about um, Lorelei, uh, playing Lorelei the mermaid, because of course, you know, I'm from Scandinavia. So uh, yeah. Hagen has uh, Hans Christian Andersen Lorelei uh, mermaid. And um, there I was um, in the water and I love water. I'm a good swimmer. Yeah, and body surfing, come that, on. Yeah. And, um, but, and I, I I watch it now and I say, oh, I'm so sweet. My voice is so so high and so, you know, I you know soft and and, uh, and that's who I was at the time. And, wow. And, and uh, yeah, uh, it was Bill Asher directed it and oh, uh, yeah, married yeah. to Elizabeth Montgomery. Of and, course, yeah. Yeah, and <laughs> I remember being in the water and I had I was supposed to be smiling and just having so much, you know, and looking at all the young people on the beach who were dancing and having so much fun. And um, meanwhile, the water is so cold, it's in November. <laughs> the Pacific is not that warm. No, anymore. it is not, no. And and uh, it was it was cold and my pasties had fallen off. Oh, and, I'm supposed to, and I'm supposed to be, you know, trying to, <laughs> trying to keep keep my shoulders above the water oh. and meanwhile the surf is coming in the surge of the surf is coming in and taking me back and forth and I know there's a guy behind me in a behind a rock in a you know in a full wetsuit uh, but uh you know and I'm again a strong I'm a strong swimmer of course and uh but I hear Phil Asher on the megaphone saying smile <laughs> <laughs> And I'm thinking, oh yeah, you too. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, but um, I, I, it's funny because everybody got colds on the, on on the, but I didn't, and I was the only one who was oh. freezing. But um, yeah, but it was fun. It was so much fun. All the I knew a lot of the people uh, who were extras because they were um, like Johnny Fane and, and uh, big time surfers. Oh wow. Were, who were asked to be, uh, you know, to be a part of the 
the um, the extra the group of people who were there and and uh, and I would see them at the beach all the time and and we would all body surf together and and oh that's uh, so cool uh, I'm a surfer myself so I'm I, I'm loving that yeah that's pretty darn cool yeah Did, um, so what were uh, Frank uh, Frankie Avalon and Funicello I mean they've always been seen as like absolute American pie you know like just perfect whatever is that what, what they were like on the set just really nice people they stayed to themselves i have to ah. say they you know and um i think that they'd had especially annette funicello had so many years on um the you know mouseketeer mouseketeer club and mm -hmm. and and um the mickey mouse club right. um as a mouseketeer and you know she she didn't interact with anyone and uh, frankie was nice but you know again they sort of stayed to themselves mm -hmm. and um and, and you know they were the stars of the movie and so i, I you know I, I think all the rest of us were just sort of wandering around and and enjoying our, our time on the beach and 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 of course, Buster Keaton. Oh, that's who I was going to ask you about. Yes. You, did, you did see him. That, I was dying to know. Him. I did see him. And I was I was blown away because I love old movies, the silent movies. And yeah. I knew about him. And not many people my age did. But yeah. I knew about him. And I was just dumbstruck. Wow. To be with him, to be on the set with his great great filmmaker and um uh you know i went up to him and i i was sweating my palms were sweating oh my gosh said, i'm so honored to meet you and he looked up and with those sort of sad eyes and he just said well thank you very much and you know and and and, and wow i i didn't know what else to say to him but i just said i've just I, I've watched your films. I just, I think you're brilliant. And, you know, I, I didn't know what else to say. And then I just oh. said, thank, thank you so, so much. <laughs> and oh. away. But it was, it was, it was an absolute honor to be, to be with him. And uh, wow. Oh. You know, wow. How many people can say they met Buster Keaton? Um, oh no, I'm with you. It's so funny, Marty. You said that it was literally the question that I was dying to ask you about, because I'm a huge fan of Chaplin Keaton uh, you know, they, they, they just greatest, but Buster Keaton, especially, I mean, what, how, what a gift that you were there and you yeah. could recognize this is something to meet this gentleman. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear he was very, cause he, I've heard that he was very sweet and very shy and yes. And yes. so it sounds like that's how he was. Yeah. That's how he was. Yeah. Wow. So, um, did you, so since, since, the, you know, I guess we'll say post lost in space, um, what have you, uh, what, what did you, outside of the theatrical work, was there anything else that you've gotten involved in or that you really have, you know, uh, had a lot of pride in or really enjoyed, you know, working on or being involved in? Well, I, um, I, as you know, with, uh, aside from West Coast Ensemble, sure. um, um, I did, uh, a lot of theater out, uh, out and uh, around the area, but then, um, I was raising my daughter at the time and mm -hmm. uh, during a lot of that time. And uh, then um, later on, um, uh, we co-parented, um, Kevin and I, uh, and eventually adopted her daughter. And oh, wow. um, yeah, and uh, our granddaughter. And wow. so after that, I, I did like 40 commercials. Mm -hmm. I did uh, a lot of national. I was the tab lady. I was, uh, you know, the um, uh, uh, what was it? The hand cream, and uh, you know, I did. I um, I was able to do the commercials at yeah. the same time, be at home because the the thing that would take the most time would be to go on auditions, and I would sure. go on auditions you know, three or four times a week, and um, and I like when. Uh, the girl when Lena was little or Laura was little, um, uh, you know, I'd say to one of the ladies, "Would you?" Because we all knew each other, because we'd all go up for the same thing. Right, right. And, you know, so they'd watch, you know, they'd watch, uh, watch them, and and uh, uh, it was, or it, it, uh, so I did commercials mainly, mm -hmm. and of course the theater. And they and, pay well. 
I, you do do a they quick paid. thing and they pay well. They, that, they paid well, I should say now. Yeah. At that time, they paid very well. Exactly. I, I was able to support myself. I would just get like maybe two or three commercials, national commercials. I would do others, but national commercials would be in the thousands of dollars. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I also saw, by the way, that you had your own postage stamp. I was like, what? I, I saw do? that like... Yeah, it was like in New Guinea or something like that. I have no I, idea. I saw a posted postage stamp with your with your uh, Judy Robinson on it. Yeah, you're kidding. How I swear, I saw that. I was doing research, and I was like, "Oh my gosh!" So oh, I thought I, you were in New Guinea. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I know I, I, know I wasn't in New Guinea, but I saw it on the internet. Oh my god. Um, along those lines, what is it like for you to suddenly look and see like? an action figure of yourself. I have always like that. That's gotta be a weird kind of feeling. Well, it's, it's, I, I look at it and I say, well, that looks more like Barbara Eden. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's sort of a generic blonde, you know, blue eyed Barbie doll. And, um, uh, but that, that, that there's an action figure, you know, people, I've, I've sort of passed it off as well, uh, but people say, Marta, you have an action figure. How many people have an action figure in their lives? Seriously. I have to, I have to be more thankful about things like that. I'm, I don't have any of them. I was promised to oh. by, by different, um, uh, not vendors, but uh, uh, different uh, people who make them uh, manufacturers to, to that they would give me some, but that, that's never happened. I don't know where they are. Oh, but. is that a shame? Did you, um, one other one that I, I, I forgot to ask is the bright colored um, uh, clothing or uniforms that you, you switched to, you know, when the show went into color, what was that like for you? Was that like awesome? Was it like, these are really amazing or what, what was your, what was your take on all of that? I, I'm, I was glad to have a change I wasn't crazy about the first year, but uh -huh. the second and third years I loved. And although other people say, oh, and the first year was their favorite, but um, with the culottes and all of that. But um, I loved the second and third year. I loved the color because we were in color. And mm -hmm. it, I mean, really the show was not unlike a walking cartoon by then. Yeah. You know, yeah. and uh, you almost saw the, dialogue in bubbles you know uh and uh and everything so paul Zestupnevich, um who designed the costumes mm -hmm. uh really decided that he wanted to bring in these beautiful colors and um i love the orange and yellow and the and the lavender and and uh, oh, yeah. it, i loved all of that and uh and it was very hip because it was you know the short you know, sort of mini skirts uh, and and or the long tunic with the pants, yeah. tight, and then the boots and and yeah, it was it was fun and uh, it was fun. But I often thought, how did they did they bring those with them? <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. How did that all come about? Okay. I know <laughs> that's funny. Did um so so first of all probably should wrap it up with you because it, we're, we're going, but I, I could talk to you for hours. You are so wonderful uh, just in, in your energy. But um, just tell me this. I, I do this with everyone that's been on the show. If there's anything that you would like to say either to the fans or if there's anything that, you know, is very dear to your heart as far as a charity, anything like that, um, that you'd like them to know. Well, um, there are a couple of things. Uh -huh. I'm, um, I'm very um, interested in the uh, children who are orphaned in our wartime and, uh, and at the border and um, the borders of various countries. And uh, I've, I'm, I've written a book from my own experience as a, as a child in an, in an orphanage. Oh. Um, uh, and it's called Birgit's Dream. And it's about uh, Birgit, me, when I was three years old and what it was I wanted and needed. And um, I also am um, interested in how we treat our elderly. My husband was uh, um, 
God bless him, was an elder abuse attorney. And oh, wow. uh, he, he saw mainly poor people, terribly abused oh. in, in nursing homes and um, the corporate, corporate nursing homes. And uh, we need to change that. We need to take, um, you know, America is so, um, so centered on youth and, mm -hmm. and, and people make jokes and, uh, and people like Stephen Colbert, who I love, but he makes jokes about being old. It's not funny. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, we need to respect people like they do in, in uh, Asia, mm -hmm. uh, in the Asian countries, that they respect the elderly, um, that we have something to continue to give. My parents were the oldest members in the Peace Corps. They were in their 80s and Jeez. they were they weren't doddering. They mm -hmm. were um, they were strong. They they went to Samoa. My father ended up writing a, a history book for Samoa. Wow. Uh, I mean, he, he, he you 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 can be as vital as as you can be physically. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and even if you can't be physically vital, you can be mentally vital. And mm -hmm. don't don't do that to to the elderly. So it's the elderly and the children, the people who really don't have any voice in in our society. And I would like I would like that to change. Mm -hmm. And um, and I hope it does. Uh, I mean, our climate too. I'm very very oh. very concerned about our climate. I hear you um, on that. Yeah. And um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry that uh, things aren't being done faster. And, um, and, and certainly um, and, uh, having it should be made uh, as a, the number one, number one priority in, in our country to, to start changing what we do and, and, and go to um, different uh, forms of energy and, and teach and, and, and trade schools. Mm -hmm. Not everyone has to go to university. Right. My, my, my father was very, very um, uh, um, uh, much a, 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 a proponent of trade schools. We need to have people trained to do the work that we need to have done mm -hmm. and, um, uh, in this country. Uh, so, I, I mean, I can go on and on, but-, oh, but I, I got you. The only <laughs> other one that I would throw out there is, which you made me think about is your uh, your own experience with finding your was it your sisters and your brothers? Yes, yes. Uh, I, I don't know if you have a minute or two just yes, to, to say that. I would love to hear how that came about because that's pretty wild. Well, it was because of Lost in Space, and I um, I received a telegram through twentieth that um, it said I, I I my name is Anneli Rusanen. And I believe, and uh, and I believe I'm your sister. And um, oh my gosh! And uh, because she had seen an article that I had done for a Finnish magazine, as sort of a tabloid magazine, and uh, she where she she said she never read those, but she was in a coffee shop. She happened to pick one up. I was on the cover, saying Birgit Rusanen. She goes, oh my god! She had remembered a photo that our mother had in her, a drawer. Oh my with, gosh. Of me as an infant of my, with my name. And it was probably the photo I have that I've uh, written uh, Birgit's dream for of, uh, and uh, used. And um, uh, anyway, Anneli, um, <laughs> I immediately contacted her and we were so amazingly close. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah, she, uh, and <laughs> she kept finding brothers and sisters. How? <laughs> there were, there ended up being 10 of us. No <laughs> way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, oh. yeah, and five of us had been put out for adoption and, uh, and uh, five that my, um, that my mother raised. Sorry, there's a bug here. That's okay. Did you meet all, all of them? I met all of them. No, I met, yes, I did. I met all of them. I, when I was pregnant with my daughter, I decided that I would travel for two months to Europe and uh, on a Eurail pass. Oh and, yeah, I've yeah, done it myself. Uh, yeah. 
Well, I figured, well, I won't be doing this for much, you know, after, after she's, she's born, I won't be doing this for much longer. I mean, I won't be, have the opportunity. And so I took my adopted parents, oh, my wow. only parents, Harold and Bertha, to Finland with me. And we met my mother and some of my siblings. Some wow. didn't want to want to meet me because they said, ah, oh, that's a different, ah, oh, different, different time, different person, diff different, different history for our mother. Mm -hmm. And um, but I I became very, very close to Anneli. And then I have a brother in Australia, um, moved to Australia in his 20s. And so I, I, I've seen him well, maybe four or five times. And, um, and uh, Seppo, uh, Anneli Seppo. I found a full sister, Marietta. She was born right before me. Oh my right gosh. Ahead of me. And uh, yeah, and uh, there's Marietta, there's Margit, there's, um, uh, uh, well, Anneli, of course, and Seppo, and Yuri, and Yari, and uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow, what a wonderful, what a wonderful moment in your life. It wow, was. That's great. Has been, and um, since my, I don't have any other family besides my daughters. Um, I mean, they're the light of my life. Of course. Um, the uh, it was. It's such a um, an uh. uh I, it's such a heart, heart, I want to say, um, opening experience to have, have this family that I know in Finland and in Australia. And Anneli passed, passed shortly after my husband passed and it oh. was a real surprise. It was a sudden death. Um, but she's, always in my heart and my memory and, and my my great love and um always in my prayers i love it i love it well listen thank you so much for being so open so honest um just uh i just it's just really really nice and i i love talking with you it it's been a pleasure on on all levels and um i will uh yeah, I, I, I'm looking forward to putting this out there because I think that the fans will just love it. Well, so. I thank you, John. You're an amazing interviewer. Oh. You, you ask all the perfect questions and, and uh, you're obviously prepared. <laughs> yeah, thank you. You know more than I do. About <laughs> well, it's odd for me because maybe, uh, you know, I'm, I'm losing it. But, I don't uh, think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. Well, listen. Thanks a bunch. Well, and I, I do want to say I am working. I'm. I'm oh, great. Go. On, yeah, I'm working on projects. I'm not only working on my book, but I'm um, Vernon Wells, who was the part of Mad Max. Yes. Him. He's my neighbor. He's a doll. He's uh, he and his wife Grace have become very good friends, and I've done a couple of projects with him, and they're very, very, they're very, very much fun. And a woman named Lana Reed has, uh, I've done a couple of films with her. My granddaughter has done a film with her, just co-starred in a film that uh, she she directed, written, wrote and directed and produced. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just, uh, I still, of course, uh, do theater and, and um, uh, I take classes and improv. Everyone should take improv. Uh, I agree 100% with that. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, so I'm continuing, and uh, and uh, I'm continuing to dance. I'm continuing to surf. <laughs> Wait, are you are you are you also oh, still surfing? I'm still. I'm, I don't. I body surf. I don't. I don't board surf. Still, but, my yeah. gosh, that body surf can take take it out of you. Oh yeah, uh, we pre -have, we have high surf this this week, so I'm not out there. But uh, right, uh, yeah. But thank you so much, John. Oh my gosh, Mart, I loved it. I loved every second of it. So I, uh, I'll, I'll definitely be in touch. But thank you so much for thank everything. You. My pleasure. All right, been a pleasure. Bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Hey, if you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button in the corner of the video so that you don't miss any of our future YouTube podcasts. Also, follow us on iTunes and Spotify, and leave us a review.